Now, one of the highlights of the recently concluded Supreme Court hearings on the petition against the Uhuru Kenyatta presidency uh, was Feroz Norji. Yes, uh, this is a human rights lawyer, very experienced, very many years experience, and an activist for very many years. Before I go into his uh, contribution or uh, his submissions, uh, allow me a few seconds to introduce this great Kenyan to you, yeah, because a lot of us don't know who the hell this guy is, yes? Now, Norji has had a very long history in the fight uh, against human rights in Kenya. Actually, Norji was also very close to another very great Kenyan, a forgotten hero, a man called Pio Gama Pinto. Now, I know the name rings a bell. Pio Gama Pinto was the very first political assassination in Kenya. Okay, this happened in 1966. My apologies. Uh, actually, it was February 25th, 1965, not 1966. Okay, uh, gosh, barely two years into independence, we're already killing people. Uh, that's Kenya for you. Anyway, um, Pio Gama Pinto was close to Norji, and maybe it's good to give you a quick background. Pio Gama Pinto, of course, was assassinated on the morning of 25th February 1965. Uh, he was living in the Westlands area. Actually, he was living in around where the Sarit Center is today in Westlands. Actually, not to create the Sarit Center, they had to buy many pieces of plots. Yes. Now, one of the pieces of plots that, that was bought to amalgate al the whole land, to put all the land together and create Sarit Center, was where Pio Gama Pinto's home was. So he was reversing from his house one morning. Uh, his daughter was seated uh, in, in a VW, you know, the old VWs. Somebody called out his name. Uh, shots were fired, uh, two shots were fired, he, he died on the spot. Yeah, that was Pio Gama Pinto's uh, story. Now, Norji was of course uh, at the forefront. Uh, those days you could do very little against the government then because it was very draconian. Yeah, Ungecheza uh, Kidogo, you just find you're gone. Yeah, yes. So, Norji has quite a history. He has even uh, recently published a book very interesting book that I recommend uh, you read. It's titled A Kenyan Journey, okay, and uh, it will give you a lot of insights in the history of the country. Anyway, on, on to submissions at the Supreme Court uh, yesterday. Now, there are lawyers who are boring to listen to, and those are many. <laughs> yeah? uh, there are lawyers who you just wonder, when will this guy finish talking? What, what, what is this guy talking about? Yeah? And then there are lawyers who are very eloquent, very interesting, they punctuate their, uh, whatever they're saying with jokes and so on and so forth. Now, Feroz Norji is one of those interesting lawyers to listen to. And he held everybody spellbound as he spoke. Now, uh, his presentation, I've listened to a lot of his uh, uh, submissions over the years. But uh, yesterday I noticed one thing. He, this particular submission was very, very uh, short on jokes. Yeah? Yesterday did not crack many jokes. In fact, I only remember one. Okay? Uh, which was even a half joke. Yeah, it was not really himself. Reason: the guy is very passionate. Yeah, and yesterday he was very passionate in his submissions to the Supreme Court. My guess is that uh, all this is the accumulation of his feelings for this country, his feelings of how this country has gone wrong, his feelings uh, of how this country has had so many lost opportunities. And to be honest, I feel him. Now, I know a lot of you will not believe this, but at the time that Singapore was seceding from Malaysia in 1965, Kenya was already on takeoff mode. Even with all of our problems of assassinating people, Kenya was in takeoff mode and we were very far. Yeah, people were looking at Kenya as one of the great uh, uh, superpowers beyond Africa within a very short time. Okay? Now, look where Singapore is today and look where Kenya is today. We will never catch up, probably, yeah? no matter how fast we run. Yeah? Anyway, Yes, so Norji's uh, contributions were very passionate. Uh, but even in the passion, he brought out some very interesting points. Uh, many of them dwelt on the missing, mysterious Form 34As. Yes, and he, he, he actually documented the letters they wrote to the IBC requesting for the forms. Yes, and uh, his submission to court was that it is not possible to produce a Form 34B and you cannot produce the Form 34As. You know, simple. Uh, uh, legal, uh, simple, simple common sense. Yeah. Uh, although it has legal, great legal ramifications. Yes. But even it is also simple common sense. You cannot produce form 34 Bs. 
yeah and they're not from 34 years to support them or they're missing you know over a period of time and he was able to bring out this very very clearly he was able he was also able to uh, cut the op the defense uh, for the first respondent and uh, uh, second respondent he was able to cut the defense of the abc into shreds yes because he talked about how instead of addressing the issues very serious issues that uh, had been brought forward by the nasa lawyers they had gone in another direction they had gone in another derogatory uh, direction you know uh, making fun of the nasa contribution saying that there was no case you know uh, going into technicalities blah 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 instead of addressing the very serious allegations that nasa had brought forth okay i believe that was a highlight for me I, it was very interesting to listen to him uh, i believe the not i believe uh, his presentations are still available on youtube in fact i'm going to do you a favor at the end of this uh, uh, um, video i'm going to post a link so that you can actually listen to this eloquent great son of kenya okay uh, yes i know you want to you expect a black people i know a lot of kenyans are racist yeah but norji is is more kenyan than most people i know okay until next time this is chris kumekuja